Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about the British issue uh, civilian respirator. Uh, this is not massively in depth, it's basically just taking a look at a couple that I have in my collection, or one of which is in fact my wife's, uh, but to just compare them, uh, have a look at the design details, look at the carriers that were manufactured for them, a couple of, a couple of examples of those. Uh, it's of interest in terms of Commonwealth um, and Dominion uh, countries as well. Uh, they did produce their own, certainly Australia, New Zealand and Canada at least, all made their own versions of this respirator. They do differ a little in terms of construction, but the basic premise of the design remains the same with the simple visor, the head harness and the, the filter and the way it attaches to the, uh, the face piece itself. We'll talk about that in a little bit more detail as the video goes on. We'll get into having a look at the details now. Okay, so here we have quite a nice example uh, in its box as it came. And this is how they would, would be issued. You have here the label on the front uh, giving you the instructions. There. Obviously, this issued by Lancashire County Council and giving you the instructions on how this should be stored. You can see it's just a, a simple tab lid there. You've got a, a little thumb notch there cut out. And you can see here the thin whip cord, which was provided as a carrying string for it. So I'm assuming the idea is you could just loop your arm through this and carry it over your arm. Uh, it's not long enough to go over the shoulder in this instance. If we open this up, you can see here the further instructions on the uh, inside face of the uh, flap there. And I'll you can pause if you wish to read these. Get the light on them there so you can see them more clearly. And as you can see here, it should be stored with the visor flat if possible. The face piece is a little folded in here, but the, the intention is that the visor would be flat across the top of the canister there. If I remove this, we'll just talk a little bit more about the, the box. A tight fit with the, the context filter. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's a tight fit in the ring at the bottom here. This is a, just a simple insert that goes in there with a hole in that takes the canister. Obviously, that stabilizes, stops the respirator just sliding around inside the box. You can see the details of the construction in the bottom there. And the string actually loops through underneath to support the box. So. That's the uh, the box, one example of the box. These do vary slightly in the way they're marked and so forth. Put that to one side, bring the respirator itself in here. Now, as I say, this is in the intention. Uh, this is how they're supposed to be stored. Uh, in st stored. This is the, the way it's intended to be done. With the visor flat across the canister, although obviously the face piece is a bit folded in here. But the idea is that this should not be bent or flexed too much. It is somewhat flexible. But uh, obviously, if it becomes cracked, then the, the respirator is unserviceable. Very simple design, thin rubber face piece, obviously with this stitched in, the visor stitched in at the front here. And the way this is necked down to meet the filter is with a seam at the side here, which is reinforced with cloth, as you can see. The head harness is similarly, the, the points where the head harness attach are similarly reinforced with cloth. And it's a three point head harness, as you can see there. If we get this untangled, you can see there. Uh, three three points of support. The buckle at the rear here, which the straps adjust through, and then the loose end of the straps are just kept in place with um, safety pins. You can see there. This particular example, the ends of the straps haven't been even been stitched. They've actually been riveted in place using two eyelets. So just folded over and a couple of eyelets put through to hold the see the double over section of the the end of the strap there. So very very simple construction, and that of course is the whole idea behind these is to produce a simple, cheap, easy to mass produce respirator for civilian use. We'll have a look at the markings on the front here. We have the lot number there, nine nine, uh, sorry, 1998B, excuse me, uh, LMB uh, R company, and that's Leyland and Birmingham Rubber. And then we have the date here, September 1937, as you can see. Talking a little bit about the canister and the way this operates, Obviously, uh, in, the air is inhaled through the front of the canister and passes through to the rear and then into the face piece. This uh, is a pre-filter, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a little bit more detail in just a minute, where I have a, a canister that's disassembled, which we'll have a look at. You can see we have a, a, what I believe to be a date on the canister. I don't need to peel that back. You can hopefully see there, 38 on the canister as well. So the air comes in through the canister and passes into uh, the face piece via this inhale valve here. Now this is a simple rubber washer, which you will find inside the face piece of the light anti-gas respirator as well. And I believe a very similar design or exactly the same design was used in the base of the filter on the small box respirator. So this is a very, very uh, long lived 
um, way of doing things. Very, very simple, but it works. So why change it? Uh, if I can get this back on the, the spigot on the filter here, it's a little fiddly with one hand. There we go. So that's a simple, obviously, pressure when you breathe out, pushes on that and seals the canister shut. When you breathe in, it just is free to flap up and allow air to pass into the face piece. When exhaling, the air is uh, obviously in the face piece, the, the back pressure in the face piece. The air actually uh, is allowed to flow out. There's enough pressure, this thin rubber, it will push away from the face and the air will actually be exhaled all around the edge of the mask. And obviously when you breathe in again, it pulls tight to your face again is the idea. So that is the, the basics of the, the civilian respirator, the, the general issue civilian respirator. Uh, very, very simple. Um, obviously the canister just attached with a rubber band here. So you just stretch the, the rubber of the face piece over and then this you can see underneath there, which we'll look at in a, the detail in a minute when we look at the canister, you've got a ridge underneath and the rubber band just holds the, the face piece in place. So we'll put that to one side. I'll just bring this box back in here again for comparison. We have here, the string is not a really an adequate way of carrying these. We have here an example of inside this carry, we have a box, standard box, just like the other one. But this has been made of a sort of paper cloth as a carrier, uh, homemade. And this is quite typical uh, of the little uh, bags and things that were made to carry these. You could also purchase items. There were handbags made, uh, which were sort of shaped to take the, the respirator. And you'll see tins and various other items made. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. But this is quite a nice example of a homemade uh, case or carrier for the box. And if we just del very delicate with this, we've got little press studs, little snaps. Um, you can see the inside of the cloth there. And if we, again, peel the edges away, this box doesn't have a label on the outside. Oh, just be careful with these. They're quite delicate. There we go. That's it. Um, you can see, if I bring this up to the camera here, top in this instance, so that's a different way of marking the boxes, but very similar otherwise. We open this up here. Very similar printing on the inside. If we compare these, I'll just move this respirator out of the way. Bring these in here. Very similar, but slightly different method of printing, slightly different to uh, font and so forth. But the instructions essentially the same. And inside we again have the respirator stored and this is a little better folded away. Um, this again has the, the context filter added on the front there. This one's stamped in red. Um, Let's have a look here, we just peel this back. So I forget NRR, but I'm sure someone in the comments will be able to answer that. And then we have 1239, the date around the side there. And again, the canister attached in exactly the same way. This one had a bit of damage. You can see the rubbers beginning to dry out and split here, um, which is an unfortunate, uh, as I say, these, these degrade very readily, it seems. I have actually done some repair work to one of these. I've patched, the, um, patched it there where this was tearing through to prevent it tearing any further. Um, but uh, otherwise it's in fairly good condition and um, you can see here the uh, safety pins used to hold the harness in place in this instance the ends of the straps are stitched so that's a manufacturing variation but the basic design exactly the same and you can see in there now the majority of these as I say when you exhaled the air just passed out um, through the edge of the face piece uh, but some were made with a small flapper valve on the front here similar to that you would see on the civilian duty respirator. And that was for individuals who suffered from breathing difficulties, asthma, that sort of thing, to make the effort of breathing out a little bit, lessen that effort a little bit. Obviously, if there's a dedicated flapper valve, the air has an easier passage rather than having to force its way around the side of the face, the side of the face piece. So that's one variation you'll see, but uh, this is the standard design. So these two are actually quite nice because they show two different sizes. Uh, this one, which was in the green uh, covered box, is a medium and it's marked on the strap, just the front strap leading from the buckle forward to the, the central attachment point. If we look underneath here, if we just take up there, you can see medium stamped under there. And in the same position on this one, we just peel this back, or nearly the same position. We have large, or what's what's visible of large. So this is a large, this is a medium, and you can actually just, well, probably looking at them, you can see the difference somewhat in size there. You'll notice with this one that the actual rubber section leading up to the strap is somewhat longer. And we don't have the reinforcement in this instance, interestingly. 
it's just the buckle goes straight onto the rubber there without any real reinforcement. So that's a, an interesting uh, development. I'd be interested to know if anyone has more of these in their collection, is the fact that this is larger uh, the reason for the reinforcement added here, or is it simply a manufacturing variation between manufacturers? As I say, I'm not an expert on these. I have a basic knowledge of them, but they are not the focus of my collecting. And um, therefore, any further information would be uh, greatly appreciated. But that's have a look at these two. As I said before, there are variations of these made in other countries. Uh, Canadian examples are quite distinctive because they have something similar to this cloth covering over the whole of the face piece. Otherwise, the shape is very similar, but you ha almost have this, you can imagine this section here that's obviously cloth covered and reinforced. The whole of the um, face piece is cloth covered uh, in many Canadian, Canadian examples. I'm not sure if all Canadian examples are made that way, but certainly a lot of them are. And you see uh, there's certainly New Zealand examples which have a, a khaki uh, coloured filter, a khaki coloured canister, which is a, a variation again. Australia made very similar examples too. Uh, so they were made in the Commonwealth as well and, and, and the Empire not just in the UK. Um, so there we are, that's a quick look over these. We're bringing a canister now which is separated from a face piece to have a look at that in a bit more detail now. The rubber band of course is the very simple method adopted for attaching the canister to the face piece. The face piece is simply put over the canister over this ridge at the back here and the rubber band is then, you can actually see the mark in the rubber band where it's been over that ridge, uh, to a, is simply put over the top to secure the face piece to the canister. Very cheap and easy way of doing it. And of course, it does mean that if the face piece is still serviceable, the canister can be replaced. Um, so a very, very simple method, very much appropriate for something which is supposed to be cheap and easy to mass, mass produce, which was an important part of the design, of course, when you're designing something to be issued out to the civilian population at large. Here we have the canister itself, and you can see there the front face of the canister without the pre-filter added, uh, just to give you an idea of the design. A little bit more detailed look at this with it being separated from the face piece. Obviously we have the, the rubber valve, the inhale valve at the back there, which we've uh, already talked about. This again I think is a 1938 dated example, if I can find the, find the date, there it is. You can see there, MB, which I think is Metal Box Company, 1938, hopefully showing up okay in the light there. So that's the canister before the addition of the pre-filter which we have here. Now this, this, as I say, is the Comtex pre-filter. Simply butts onto the, the canister there, like that. The rim on it is designed to be the same as the rim on the edge of the, the end of the, uh, the, the existing canister there. And it's then simply attached using thick cloth tape. In this instance, black, the tape on the previous respirators we were looking at, of course, was a pale, off-white, sort of buff colour. Um, these, I uh, believe, are made of anodized aluminium, and certainly it's very light uh, in this green tone. And these were introduced because the canister as designed, this canister, was not sufficient uh, against uh, arsenic-based war gases, or arsenical gases. So the context filter was introduced to deal with that. I believe the date was May 1940. So that was the purpose for the, the pre-filter. Of course, the canister is the same as that, uh, certainly initially used with the um, civilian duty respirator and you will see those have the same same uh, fix to the problem in having the context filter the pre-filter added onto the front of the canister there you'll note that the the inside face of the the context filter this one's actually been dented as you can see uh, at some point in its life uh, this has been uh, shaped very similarly to the the uh, front face that was originally found on the uh, canister of the, uh, the civilian respirator. So that's an interesting feature of the design is this additional ca uh, filter element that was added uh, due to problems with this canister being inadequate against some of the gases that it was feared would be used. One thing I'll talk about very briefly here is this home guard issue tin for carrying the civilian respirator. I'm not going to go into this in great detail because I will be talking about it in more detail going forward in a separate video. However, this is uh, an issue example of different method of carrying the respirator obviously intended to be a much more substantial way of doing so than carrying it in the cardboard box now for the home guard obviously this is a necessity uh, if you're going to be doing sort of military style training and you want to carry that respirator you need something better than a cardboard box the reason for bringing this up here is it's a stand-in for very similar but not identical civilian items which were made which you could purchase you could purchase tins very similar to this in black uh, the primary primary color i've seen 
they differ a little in the details but they're generally padded inside and you slot the respirator with the canister down inside and they're wide enough the idea being they're wide enough for the visor to fit in without bending too much or you could also get oblong tins which were very similar in shape and size to the boxes but obviously just a much sturdier way of, of doing things as i say this video is in no way comprehensive but i just thought it would be interesting to bring this up because very similar items were used by civilians or could be purchased by civilians to carry their respirators in a more sturdy way so there we are i do hope you found that interesting as i say just a brief run through uh, the British, couple of british civilian respirators i have in the collection as i say one in one is my wife's obviously when we've we've done events where she's been reenacting as a civilian uh, carries that with her um and it's in a nice original case as you've seen someone's manufactured a, a nice uh, cloth carry case for it very common um as already said uh, and it's an interesting part of collecting these i know some people have quite extensive collections with different various different designs of carrier which i've already discussed in the video a little bit of a side um a little bit of an aside for me really as i'm primarily interested in military um items from the period but nevertheless very interesting things to have and very um, emblematic of the period, of course, um, the uh, air raid precautions and so forth are a well-remembered part of the Second World War, uh, much as gas was not used. But anyway, I hope you found that interesting. As I always say, uh, if you have and you'd like to see more from the channel, then please do consider subscribing uh, if you haven't done already. If you have subscribed or you're newly subscribing, please do make sure you've hit the little bell, the little notification button down below. That, of course, will alert you when I upload future videos. Uh, if you really like my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, you can. There's both a Patreon and a, a PayPal link down below as well. Thank you very much again to everyone who supports me using those two methods. As ever, it is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much indeed for that. There is also social media for the channel as well. There's Facebook, Instagram and Twitter all linked down below. And if you want to contact me but you don't really use social media, there's of course the email address linked down below as well. But that's everything I wanted to cover in this video, I think. So until next time, bye for now.